you know, some of my jobs are actually really difficult, even though I would like to believe I don't make them look difficult. Um, but that was the hardest thing I've ever shot in my life. It's the hardest job I've ever done in my life. Even though it was only two and a half weeks, it was truly the hardest thing I've ever done. Because on Queer Eye, I talk about other people's issues and sometimes I'll share mine, but I felt so exposed during this documentary. And I cried, I mean, if you've seen it, you know, I cried harder than if you've ever seen me cry publicly ever. I, it was just a really emotional job. When you are challenged at every turn because of your physical appearance, so there's just such weight put on your physical appearance, um, that then really dictates how you treat others and what you expect of others. Um, and so I think that my experience as a kid and, and going through life with colorism in a South Asian community, but also racism, um, it really set me up for just radical compassion, like just working to make sure that people don't feel the same way I did when I was younger. And so um, I do all I can, whether it be on TV or in real life to make it clear to people that there are certain things that can make you feel better. One of those things is style, um, but also there's so much more to do inward than there is outward, which is just really coming to peace with who you are and what you represent and that the version of you is the most beautiful version of you. I always felt a certain way about um, beauty products and, and uh, when it relates to colorism. But this just made me more angry. I'm a very happy person typically, but it did make me incredibly angry. And so it made me reconsider the brands that I use, the brands that I encourage people to use. Um, words that are buzzwords like brightening cream, um, which is just basically lightning cream. Um, and so, yeah, the, the, it's, it's changed the way I talk about products, it's changed the way I um, promote products on my own social media. Um, it's changed my partnerships. I mean, people who want to join me as a partner or have me join them as a brand partner. The amount of times I've had to say no over the last few years is insane because during my time with um, the shooting Beauty and the Bleach, I learned these kind of brands are the ones that are encouraging us to feel terrible about our skin colour. Um, and so, yeah, it's affected um, it's affected pretty much every facet of my uh, public life. It's not just about beauty products, it's also about the fashion brands that I will post about or talk about or the brands that I will wear. If they're only choosing to uh, represent light skin versions of those ethnic groups, I don't want to support you. I hate to say this because I sound ungrateful, However, up until recently, there really weren't that many people that made me feel represented or seen. Um, there were wonderful queer people, there were wonderful black people on TV, there were wonderful white folks on TV, all these people. But it was so rare that we saw South Asians on television. And the interesting thing is, I don't know what the case is in Australia, quite frankly, I don't know about the, um, the ethnic mix, but for the US and UK, South Asians are a massive, massive uh, group of, uh, a massive proportion of our, uh, uh, what's it called? Our demographic. So in England in particular, like th there's almost 10% of the population that is South Asian. We are the largest marginalized group, the largest. Um, and then in America, we make up 4%, which is a massive, massive percentage when you think about it. And so, it was frustrating to see that we were never really on television, we were never in movies. It wasn't until a few years ago when we saw the likes of Mindy Kaling really rise up. And then Priyanka Chopra really start to rise up. They weren't light-skinned girls. And then over the last few years, we've seen, like, truly the last couple, we've seen Bridgerton. But up until that point, you really didn't see us. And if you did see one of us, we were real pale. You wouldn't even know mm. what race we were. And so, do I feel seen or have I felt seen? Not until recently. I do think that the fashion and beauty industry has changed a lot since 2020. Um, 
uh, uh, and, and that is lovely to see. Uh, at first I thought this is just a little bit of tokenism and to make us feel like we are seen. But a lot of fans have consistently um, uh, hired people of colour or queer people and, and that does make me happy. Um, and so I will say that over the last three years, they've done more work than I saw in the first 36 years of my life. Um, and so, yeah, I'm really happy with how things have moved along. Could it be better? Always could be, of course it could. Um, but as far as the last few years have gone, I'm proud of what they've, they've come up with. I mean, I see, I, I just saw a bunch of shows a few days ago, um, at New York Fashion Week, London Fashion Week, and I saw more models of color than I've seen in a very long time, which was wonderful. And I'm not just talking light skinned girls. So one of the Shivani suits I wore at the Emmys, um, it was, I think, 2019. It was um, all gold. It was all embroidered in gold. Um, and it was handmade for me. Um, and it took so many hours, so many hours, and so many people to create this look. And I've never felt more regal in my entire life, ever. And I've never, I don't think I've ever felt more proud in my entire life. Um, to represent my people. And that has pride of place in my closet. No one's allowed to touch it. That's the only thing that's off limits for my kids that they're not allowed to touch. Maybe one of them will get want to get married in it when he's older. And I'd be so proud. But I mean, yeah, that, that's, a, that's the one item. I mean, don't get me wrong, there's many designer things that I'm like, oh, that's gorgeous. I'm going to keep that. And that's special to me. I worked really hard for that. Every time I get a new job, I buy myself a bag. A little one, just a little... They're always mini bags, um, but they're really precious to me also, just because everyone represents a show I got. Um, but when it comes to really a, a connection, it's that Shivani jacket. <laughs> um, you know, it's really difficult. There isn't one um, because I wore things that my parents hated. I'm sure both of you wore things that your parents hated. They just and, and I hate what the kids are wearing these days, but I can't say anything about it because I just think, well, you're expressing yourself. I express myself, you should express yourself. And as long as they're, they're feeling something and they're actually trying and they're making an effort, I just think, who am I to judge? Even if I don't like it, they're feeling it. Great, wear it. Um, but my gosh, if they start wearing 2021, two, three clothes as if it's vintage, in 15, 20 years, I'm gonna be so pissed. I'm be so pissed because that's what kids are doing now. They're wearing clothes that I wore in high school as if it's vintage. I'm like, no, it's not. I'm not that old. No, thanks. I remember those things. You don't want to wear those. You're going to regret them like I did. I think I would want my outfit to be a power range. <laughs> I was obsessed as a kid. And it never really went out of style. Not that it was ever in style, but it was just a spandex outfit that was, and I would just choose the color. I would go with pink because I was obsessed with Kimberly. Um, so yeah, I didn't know if I carried this outfit. 